Hey everybody, it's Marcus Norman, your favorite gentleman on Gentleman Style Podcast stage. Today we have, coming to the stage, Dr. Katherine Colleen. She's an American-born humanitarian, advisor, author, composer, and artist better known for her foundational work. Miss Miss Catherine, this summer job, her summer job at 16 was doing scientific research at NASA. Before her 21st birthday, she earned her PhD. Woo! in mathematics and was speaking to conferences on human reasoning and how to make the infinite infinite her hyper polymath her career has enjoyed her through a multitude of various career paths and she is well versed in numerous disciplines numerous studies and is here to help us align not only spiritually our relationships our finances and 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 and, our, and with the art of meditation at the foreground of it she is here on the gentleman style podcast stage to teach us and inspire and to give back today so help me welcome this powerhouse speaker this woman that is beyond beyond Miss Dr. Katherine Colleen. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to the Gentleman wow. Style Podcast stage. <laughs> Thank you. That was a hell of an intro. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you. So that weird. was you. That was yeah. you. Yeah, I know. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. One more round of applause, y'all. Doctor, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. You are phenomenal. You are my hero on the Gentleman Style Podcast to say. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. It's an absolute honor. I, it's, I, I absolutely love uh, helping people. It's, I'm at that, that place in my life where that's what it's about. So uh, you call, I haul. I'm there. <laughs> Is it, and a heart of gold, y'all. Everything I just read, I forgot to mention, he has a heart of pure gold. Doctor, diving right in, I have to ask the question. I ask highly successful people, what are their habits? What are their routines? What is something that you do daily that really sets the tone for the rest of your day? Um, because successful people have successful habits. What is something that you do that really lets you know, I'm going to make this day a good one? Yes, yes. Well, it's all about that, the routines that we create to support ourselves. Uh, because as you try to you know, get yourself into a, a stage in your life, the trick is keeping yourself there. So um, <laughs> so I do a number of things. I have I have uh, quite the, the routines, but but the, the basics, what I say, the, the maybe top three. Number one, good night's sleep. Absolutely must have good quality sleep. Um, and, and so sometimes I will just kill that alarm and let myself sleep in a little bit if I need that. Um, and, um, uh, so sleep is number one, got to sleep, got to wake up that, that first moment when you wake up, you start to come to, you're not quite totally hundred percent awake. Right. Uh, but as I start to come to, I'll just take 30 seconds, 60 seconds and give thanks to to god to source to to whatever uh you would like to call <laughs> that which creates uh that's within us and around us and and just take a moment of gratitude just take a moment of ah i get another day awesome. <laughs> let's let, yeah. let's just kind of be in be in that moment and be thankful for the day um then uh you know good breakfast i'm not a personal thing. not everybody's big into breakfast but my body needs it um and then i just sort of take a little, little while, you know, good coffee. 
<laughs> um, I don't know how some people like, oh, caffeine's bad, caffeine's good. But I think every day that, that's very individual. And so I do like, I like a cup or two in the morning. And so, but I take that time to have really deep conversations with my husband. And uh, we talk about all kinds of, of crazy things, <laughs> physics. Uh, this morning was photonic matter. Hadn't heard of that. He brought that to the breakfast table. We, we kind of start out hardcore in the morning. We might be talking about society. We might be talking about uh, divine feminine. We might be, I, know, I don't know what I'm going to get in the morning, but we'll have these really fun uh, conversations over coffee that, that um, really get our minds going. But it, it's also creating connection between us, which is really what it's about. Um, the subject matter doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, and, and then from there, it hit the ground. But then there's also important uh, routines at night so the way you end your day is going to affect the sleep that you get and how your life is the next day. So um, I've noticed through experimentation just with myself, again, it's very individual. If, if I have had alcohol the night before, I will not sleep well. And that will affect the following day. It affects my energy the following day. It affects a lot of things. So I'm very careful about how much and when timing all that. I don't eat after a certain time in the day. Um, I meditate for an hour every night. Um, and, that, and that practice uh, changes exactly what the meditation is. It involves it's like a workout. So you don't want to do the same thing, exact thing every day. Um, but, uh, but that's very critical. That is non-negotiable. 8 p.m. Every night, I don't care what time zone I'm in. I'm at 8 p.m. is meditation time, and that is sacred. And, um, and that kind of sets the end of the day really well. So I've worked with the, the body to make sure I'm going to get a good night's sleep physically. I've worked with the mind to make sure that I am settled down and in a beautiful place, you know, mentally, um, you know, and then round it out with that time with, with, uh, with, um, <laughs> with my divine masculine um, and, and uh, you know, so that I'm emotionally in a good place. So by, by the time I do go to sleep, I am physically, mentally, and emotionally in a good place. That gets you that beautiful night's sleep that starts the whole cycle over again. <laughs> Love, it. Love that. And that's, that's big in a society. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and it was such, so, so, so important. Uh, one of the big things you talked about is getting to bed, having those firm non-negotiables, getting to bed by a certain time, not eating by a certain time and, and, and recognizing within yourself that you need this. And so that's, 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 that's what makes you unique. And that's what makes you special is because we, we don't live like that, right? The, the average person goes to work. The average person gets up every single day by an alarm clock. We, we, we get up by alarm clock. We answer to alarms and bells and whistles. Um, school kids, they're, they're, they're trained to respond to alarm systems and bells. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time to go play. Now it's time for English. Now it's time for science. But you teach to this in, in, in your 11 stages of human development. So, Doctor, um, before we touch on that, what are some? What is someone that you admire in your industry that has really um, carved a path for you? Someone they can be deceased or living. Oh, that's a good question. And um, I, Marcus, I'm so sorry. I'm having a technical difficulty in that my my charger is malfunctioning. I'm so sorry. Would it be possible no to take 30 seconds to go maybe grab another grab a different charger and uh, make sure that I don't lose battery? <laughs> we absolutely can. Okay. We all. That's absolutely fine. We are going to a commercial break. You guys stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level, and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, 
and interviews as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel and if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody, we are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We have the incredible Dr. Catherine Colleen to the stage on Gentleman Style Podcast show. She is absolutely incredible. And so before the commercial break, we she's touched on who um, her morning routines and how important having those non-negotiables in your life are absolutely paramount. Getting to bed early, getting to bed by a certain time, dedicating time for meditation and self-reflection and that inner work that we need to do. We spend so much time exerting ourselves and exerting that, that, that energy into uh, externally to others, but we never take time to do the inner work. If you miss that, scroll back, go back and tune back in. She is absolutely dynamic. <laughs> Doctor, doctor, welcome back to the Gym Style Podcast Show. Thank you so much for breaking that down. But you teach to this. The, um, that was profound what you do. What you do is so important. You have, through self-discovery and, and th other thought leaders, you have discovered something unique. The 11 stages of human development. What are those stages? And can you help break that down for us? Yeah, so so this was... Um this is sort of my big message to the, to the world. People need to know this. I can't believe we're not taught this in school, but there's um, the uh, there's these stages that we go through. I don't care where you were born, what your politics are, what religion you currently enjoy, where on earth you grew up, in what country, under under what culture. It doesn't matter. You've been going through these stages from the minute you were born, and you will be going through these stages till the minute you exit. Um, and there's 11 of them and they were pieces of it were discovered by all kinds of fantastic pe people um robert keegan james fowler uh jane lovinger uh from germany uh all through about the last hundred years uh sri aurobindo um in uh from india in the 1950s and they and i realized they all kind of linked up and they daisy chain and and it forms a cycle this is the big deal. In the West, we think of staircases of achievement. And, and then we, you know, we dog ourselves when we feel like we've gone backwards. You haven't gone backwards. You've just gone around again, just around and around and around. And you're going to keep going around. Uh, I, I can't tell you how to stop that. You can't. <laughs> it, stops, <laughs> it stops the day you die. But, but what you can do is some of these stages, and I'll tell you about them. Some of these stages are a little rough. And some of these stages are quite enjoyable and pleasant. And so you can learn how to get yourself into the pleasant, enjoyable stages and stay there longer. And you can recognize when you're being pulled around again to the less pleasant uh, stages. So here's the stages. Stage one, everything is me. When you're an infant, when you first enter this world, it doesn't, you don't think there's any difference between you and your parents or anyone else. The, the newborn mind does not see any difference between itself and anything else. And now it is kind of funny that we're born with the right idea and then we have to work our way back <laughs> to it. And that's just <laughs> the, the humor, you know, sense of humor of the universe. Um, but uh, that's where we begin as infants. And then somewhere around two years old uh, is the first time you see stage, uh, stage two, which is... Uh, I am my experiences. So you are identified with, this is all how you see yourself. You're identified with your experiences. Uh, it's the first time you really feel separation from your parents because all of a sudden you can't just scream and cry and do whatever you want all the time, right? Now now there are rules. Now there are, is expectation. Uh, and so you get tied in with your experiences. When you see this later, 
is when you have a really profound experience, it could be a really great experience or a really bad experience or however you judge it, you get stuck in that story for a while you go around telling all your friends well you would not believe what happened to me (laughs) you're in stage two you have to process that experience integrate the lessons and move on get open to the next thing so what happens when you get you uh manage to process all those experiences then you end up in stage three i am my needs and this you hit the first time again around two three years old You'll see it again. It's the classic teenager, right? (laughs) I want what I want. I want it now. I don't care about anybody else. Everybody else is just a mechanism for the fulfillment of my needs. They're not human. They're not people. Um, And you have to go through this stage. Each stage is important. So it's not like you want to just ignore the early stages. You must process your experiences. You must understand and catalog your needs so that you can learn to fulfill them for yourself. Whatever need, I need sleep, I need food, I need the right kind of food, I need, and you know, and needs start to get more complex. You know, a good injury will pull you right back here. I am my needs. A good, you know, good illness will pull you right back here. Um, um, a death in the family, uh, all kinds of, of different things will pull you right back here. And, and you'll know it because the word need will be coming out of your mouth much more often. You know, I just need. I just need a good night's sleep. I just need to know where I'm going in this life. I just need to find my purpose. I just need a new job. I need. That's stage three. You have to catalog those needs, which may have changed now with every major change in your life. You may have new needs you didn't even know about. So that makes it challenging. But you got to catalog those needs and fulfill those needs for yourself. Um, then you get to move on to stage four, which is others have needs too. Ah. And the, the first time you hit stage four, it comes as quite a shock. Wait, wait, my parents are people. Wait, there's all these people are people just like me and they have needs too. And it's quite shocking. And this is usually the first time like, you call your parents and apologize for being a teenager. And um, I think I was about 20 when I said, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and so others have needs too. And, uh, you know, and parents are always so sweet about it, aren't they? I don't know. My mom's too nice about it. Oh, you were such a joy. I'm like, I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't think I was. Um, but when you realize other people have needs too, you start trying to help fulfill the needs of others. Beautiful. But you get stuck there too long, it can turn into martyrdom. It can turn into you not getting your needs fulfilled because you're so busy fulfilling everybody else's needs. So so balance, you start to need to balance it. You can't figure out, oh, how can I help? I can't help 8 billion people. What am I going to do? I can't, I can't fulfill all their needs. So that's when you click over into stage five. I am my ideology. And... We're, we're, we see a lot of this right now. The stage five is going to sound very familiar. In stage five, you are your ideology. Now, ideology could be, we always think political, but it's not just political. It's religious, social, moral, uh, intellectual, all your rules for how to live life and what should what is right and what is wrong and, and what you should do and what you think others should do. These are all ideology. Um, and, and you need an ideology ideology just to get through the day just to make good choices you're you're making choices all the time you're choosing the food you eat you're you're choosing the career you have you're choosing a partner you're you know you're not just not just choices at the ballot box you're making all kinds of choices Uh, and you have to have an ideology to help you make good decisions so but you when you are first formulating that usually in your early 20s uh but you'll revisit this anytime there's a good election cycle (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we've been through this recently um and and it sounds it, weird. Dra- it drags the entire country into stage five i am my ideology and it's all people know and so you'll know when you're in this stage when it's very us and them right i'm one of these and they are one of those and i we are right and they are wrong and um and you start to uh, you have a lot of anger 
and a lot of offense. You feel angry and offended more often than you feel anything else. Uh, you know, test yourself. Go read some political headlines and see how you feel. If you feel angry or offended, you're in stage five and you want to do work to get out of it because it, that doesn't feel good <laughs> to feel angry and offended all the time. You're only punishing yourself. Um, sure. And so you've got to get past that. If we stuck in that too long, we start to see the others as not human, as lesser, and we don't ever want to put anybody else below us or above us, right? All, everybody's the same. We're all just people. Um, and so the way you get out of that is you have to take your your beliefs, which are usually issue based, right? Uh, on this issue, I believe that this is the right thing. And you have to boil that down to a principle. What's a principle? And principles underlie dozens of beliefs sometimes. And so if you said, tell me all your beliefs, the list would be so long, it would be <laughs> 10 pages long. But if I ask you, tell me your principles, you know, you could put that in three points. You know, it's principles are much easier to keep track of. So when you boil them down to principles, you start to find that we all have basically the same principles. And you go, oh, we're not so different. Well, okay. And you go to stage six, live and let live. I'll do me, you do you. We'll all get along. Everything's fine. It's a, it's a very peaceful stage. So live and let live. And most people, nah, nope, that's not exactly true, is it? Uh, a lot of people, <laughs> many, many people <laughs> will never move past that in their life. They, they will stay in stage six and be perfectly happy there. And, and that, these are peaceful people. They're not trying to start trouble. They're not trying to you know, be a part of anything, not being ugly to anybody. But you still are identified basically with your ideology. So you're just real quiet about it. <laughs> you're not in anybody's space about it. Um, so, and you can stay right there, live and let live and have a perfectly happy life. Uh, but that's not usually what the universe has in mind. So at some point in your life, some major event will, what's called wake you up, right? It's usually a major event, a, a death of a parent or divorce or um, you know, the loss of someone incredibly close to you. Um, or you know, sometimes it's just a significant birthday. And something, something flips a switch. And you wake up one morning and you're looking in the mirror and you're a different person looking out of those eyes at you. And you're looking at yourself like, who are you? Where, what happened? <laughs> and you start to examine life. They used to call it a midlife crisis, right? These days, there's also a quarter life crisis and people go, oh no, people in their twenties are going into midlife crisis. I'm like, good, do it. And it's, it's ugly, right? The first time that, that you hit stage seven, which is questioning everything. They call it the dark night of the soul. But your question, you're just questioning everything. And the first time you hit that, it's very scary. Um, so whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you don't know when you're going to hit it the first time, but it's rough. And it's funny, in that phrase, the dark night of the soul, you can always tell what people have been through it because they go, oh, yeah. Right? Because <laughs> you're like, yeah, that's <laughs> <dark."> <laughs> um, and, Let uh, me tell you. Now and again. Every now, yeah, right, yeah. Let me tell you how dark it was, and and a lot of people have been through this, and they don't even they don't talk about it. It's very private, um, because you don't really know what to do. So the first time you go through that questioning your whole life, everything, everything you do, uh, it's terrifying because you haven't done it before. But the bad news is you will come back here again. But the good news is it gets easier and almost more fun every time. So yeah. I think, you know, I, I, um, I recently, yeah, yeah. So you'll go through it again, but it may not be your entire life you're questioning. You may be questioning just the career bit or just the personal relationship piece or just some other piece, right? So you might question one piece at a time. Uh, that's easier, <laughs> certainly more enjoyable. <laughs> but let's say you're questioning the like a career piece. 
that, that can be fun and innovative. It doesn't need to be terrifying. It can be, okay, we're going to throw out all the rules. We're going to throw out everything we thought we wanted. And we're going to blank canvas. The world is my oyster. It's full of possibility. This could be innovation. That's a different kind of questioning. So what if your questioning wasn't terrifying? What if you're the captain of it? You're in charge of it. And it's innovation time. And it's breaking down the rules time. Oh, this feels rebellious. This could be fun. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's always a little bit scary, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and especially if you can find uh, a friend who's going through this, something similar or who has been that you can write. If you're not alone in it, it's a lot less terrifying. So I, I have a, a, a new student that I just took on. I take a small number of, uh, of, of students for free. I have always have four seats that I, that I work with people for, for free um, because I don't want money to stop. And, and, uh, and this, this girl is amazing, but she's very young. And, and when I said Dark Knight of the Soul, she goes, what's that? And I went, uh-oh. I haven't, haven't experienced seen it yet. yet. <laughs> this is gonna, this is gonna get hard. I haven't experienced, but she's actually just coming into it. And I'm like, I'm so glad that that we met when we did. You know that that the, the universe has a beautiful way of bringing you the help you need when you need it. So I'm like, that's it. You're you're filling the last seat I had, uh, the last free seat I had for mentoring. You know, I've got you. She's she's you know young broke college student. I'm like, I got you. I'm gonna get you through this. It's gonna be okay. And um, but it can be it can be not so scary if you have someone to talk to. Um, so that's stage seven, questioning everything. And and when you first see this, you're also throwing out all these ideologies because you look at the ideology and you go, it's broken. It's There's hypocrisy, there's cracks, there's inconsistencies. And you go, okay, that one is junk. I'm going to try on another one. And you try and grab a different one. <laughs> and you right. cling on to that ideology. You go, this is the one. And then <laughs> you see the cracks and the inconsistencies and the hypocrisies and you go, Okay, that's junk, and you throw that out. And you grab another one. You go, no, this is the one, <laughs> and you you try them all on. Totally sure that each one is the one, and what you're doing is you're you're trying on all these packaged ideologies that have been prepackaged by society for you, and you you see the cracks and the hypocrisies and all of them, and you go, oh no, it's all junk. There's nothing that's true, uh, and then as you get towards the end of that, you start to realize that wait, well there's pieces that are true, pieces that feel right. And you start to make a jigsaw puzzle, take a piece of this one and a piece of that one and a piece of the other one, right? And you go, well, I like this piece. And you go, hey, I can mix and match. I don't have to take some prepackaged set of beliefs. I can assemble my own and have the confidence to do that. And um, so you make your own, you put it together. And then you start to realize that there's something true at the heart of all of them, something that they actually all have in common. And it's that principle down at the bottom. You can even analyze every religion in the world and go, there's, what's the same about all of them? Spoiler, it's love. And it's at the bottom mm-hmm. of all of them. Now, the application of that looks vastly different <laughs> depending on you know, how you choose to apply the principle you know, principles of love, right. but, but it's a very fun exercise to take, uh, take a friend and blow their mind by, by having them bring up some issue. It can be a political issue or a religious issue or a social moral issue. It doesn't matter. Just have them pick one they're really vehement about and ask them, uh, what do you think should be done about that? And they'll go, oh, well, I think we should do ABC. And you go, oh, cool. Why? And you, and you have them come down a level by asking why dig, dig deeper. Why? And then they go, oh, well, because whatever. You go, oh, why? Why is that? And you make them dig a little deeper. Why, 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 why? Like a two-year-old, just to keep asking why. <laughs> dig, 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 dig. And by the time you get to the fifth why, I swear it will be love. Or something that sounds an awful lot like love. And they go, what? You know, and they're like, it's really fun. It's really fun. Um, so then you get down to, I mean, it's a yeah, great at parties. Now, be careful because you got really got to guide them and keep them focused so they don't fly off emotionally. But, um, but this is true. When you, once you get to that and you're like, oh, then you click over, yeah, yeah look at that. It's based in love. Hmm. 
Hmm. Then, uh, then you get to, to stage eight. Uh, stage eight is, you can express this a couple of ways. I'm going to call it purpose. Purpose. Hmm. Because you've come out of this questioning. You realize you, you can create your own set of beliefs uh, that work for you. And now that's not interesting anymore. Now what's interesting is, why am I here? What's the point for me in this life? What am I doing? The big uh, what why. What am I here to do? What would excite me? The big why. Why am I here? Um, and and you start digging for purpose. And there are so many cool methods. Um, so in the main book, in the big the big red one, of course I have it handy. In the big red book, um, there there's and it's also on the website and and it's in all it's in all the places. So. Uh, go check it out, but but look it up. There there are um, seven methods that I compiled from different people for finding your purpose. Do them all. <laughs> try them all. It's a really fun exercise. Sit down and try them all, and then see what what is the common theme through the whole thing. Um, and it can be very fun. So you get you get focused on finding your purpose, and then that's exciting. You go, oh my gosh, this feels amazing, right? That purpose-driven life. Well, you have to know what your purpose is first. So, and then this is just your purpose for now. You may have a different purpose later, different phases of life, right? Um, huh. So you start acting on that and it gets very exciting. Um, and then once you're acting on that and you and by now you're, you're spending more time in prayer or meditation or some combination of the both, you're not afraid to ask the big questions. So then you start to think about consciousness and it's stage nine. I am a consciousness in this body. Um, KRS one had this amazing, they filmed him. I, I wish he would do more. He, um, and you're like, <laughs> Did she just quote KRS one? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, where he talks about the silent observer, connecting, feeling that consciousness different from the body, and um, and that sense of I'm in this body. I'm kind of staring out at the world like it's an avatar. I'm a consciousness. Okay, I'm not the body. I'm not the ideology. I'm not the needs. I'm not the experiences. I have these things but I am not these things. I'm a consciousness. And, and that starts to blow your mind for a while. And you kind of work on that in, in your reading and your meditation that, that sort of takes your interest. And then stage 10, I am the one consciousness. There is only one consciousness. And th now we're getting into the last two stages, which are incredibly hard to maintain and still commute to work. Um, so the, the one consciousness. Um, and it's when you realize there is only one. You're, you're, you're edging towards that oneness, but it's only the consciousness, not the body. You're still kind of a consciousness in a body, but there is only one consciousness. And then, uh, and so that's pretty crazy right there. And that really has your attention for a while. Um, and then eventually you get to stage 11. I am the one consciousness. This is going to be a lot of words. We'll boil it down. <laughs> we'll call it, I'm going to call stage 11 complete connection. Just complete connection. Because that's when you realize you are the one consciousness and the physical manifestation, not just the body, but the world at the same time. And there is no difference between consciousness and matter, energy, manifestation, uh existence god and and it is just all connected and and that's that that truly blissful oneness now you cannot be in that stage and drive a car don't do that right <laughs> you you right. have to come out of that stage and live life and then kind of go back into it during during your meditation right because the, the world starts to look like it sort of dissolves a little bit around you and it's and it's freaky you don't even need psychedelics to get there it's um it's uh it's very cool but incredibly hard to maintain so then then uh but then life happens 
you'll have some major experience again. Now you're stuck in your experience, right? You wouldn't believe what happened to me. Um, and then, you know, life changes and now you have new needs and you got to work, right? And around we go and around we go. But, but you can spend more time in the later stages where it's more fun, you know, purpose, joy, love, um, oneness. And you can spend less time in the earlier stages where life can be a little bit tough. And you can, you can catch yourself by knowing you're going through it. You can catch yourself and go, oh, I'm so sorry today. Okay, what do I need? Let's meet those needs real quick so we can move on. Or, man, I'm feeling all angry and offended. I must be stuck in my ideology today. Let me get past it. Uh, and and uh, there you go. <laughs> where's the mind blown and nosy? Like, where's the mind blown of it? We're going to take we're going to dissect some of this. You all don't go anywhere. We're going to dissect some of this because this was this was I wanted the, the good doctor to speak on this because I wanted her to get the complete um, 11 stages out. We have one more quick commercial break from our show sponsors. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right right back. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Hey, we are tuning back into the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We have the incredible, the phenomenal, the super fragilistic, expialidocious, Dr. Catherine Colleen. And so she talked, she just broke down, if you missed it, the 11 stages of human development. A um, couple of things stuck out to me. Purpose, right? We hear about um, young men and young women trying to find their purpose in life. And I think sometimes they get to that stage, as you mentioned earlier, they get to that stage sometimes even sooner um, when they're trying to figure out who they are in, in high school or what what biggest one college university what what am i doing here what what should i be studying where am i best suited where do i fit in am i an athlete am i an academic society with those preconceived packages that they're trying to fit in right society hands us this package and said you are this and then you try it on and you say i don't like this this doesn't feel right those are the cracks those are the the the, the yeah. stigmas that don't fit my norm and that's where you broke down earlier where i have to pull a piece from here i can pull a piece from here and i can put them all together to blend who i truly am so purpose is who i think we get to that stage um in different points of our life, but it, it, it happens more than once, right? These stages, you can revert back to them, correct? Yes, yes. So, so you're gonna, you're gonna see them over and over. And, uh, and so uh, the important thing is, is you've got to complete the earlier ones before you're really ready to plug into like the purpose stage, stage eight. So, um, which is, is not always exciting, right? But, but you've got to fulfill your needs, get your, boil your ideology down to principles, be ready to question everything into those different pieces for yourself and create your own belief system uh, for your own, you know, beautifully individual self before you're really ready to address what is my purpose. Here. Otherwise, you keep getting pulled back around. But yeah, you keep you. Your purpose may change over the course of your life. You may have many purposes over the course of your life. Uh, you know, sometimes. Um, I mean, who knows what it is? I, I, I've I've had phases where um, my my purpose was was to to teach math, right? To teach to teach work with children, you know, math and influence specific individuals. You never know what what influence you're here to have on whom, you know, and, and then it, and then it changes and the purpose was to make 
you know, make mirrored and find self and then the purpose changes and it's teach, you know, work with people about themselves. And, and I have to tell you, you are absolutely glowing with purpose right now. And, and I see the, when you do your podcast, have you noticed how you feel when you do this podcast? You literally glow. It's, it's fantastic. It's this, um, when people are steeped in their purpose, when they're in the midst of it, they, what, what I see is a yellow glow around you. It just, ding, and, <laughs> and I see this when people are in the midst of doing what they were here to do. They just literally like glow. Um, it's just, I had to mention that. It's very cool and I enjoy it. I enjoy seeing that. I'm like, oh, look at you. You're in your purpose right now. <laughs> Thank you for that, doctor. And and I I appreciate you breaking that down. Thank you for seeing me um, through you because I work really hard and and I do enjoy this. I love this because shining the spotlight on you and shining the spotlight on and having one single platform where people can learn from experts such as yourself is, is 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 it's my heart's joy. I really enjoy doing this. I really love um, shining the light on you. I really love bringing um, great minds, great um, people of existence, great consciousness people, people who are aware of not only themselves and who they are and have found their purpose um, and bringing them to the stage and bringing them to light. So thank you for seeing me and acknowledging me in this moment. Uh, And I love that. You can have multiple purposes, y'all, whether it be a math teacher or uh, or or a coach yeah. or a mentor and and catering to the need that sh- notice that shift that she mentioned earlier she was able to shift and impact that young lady's life because that was needed at that moment that became her purpose at that moment right so you're not stuck you're not you're not a tree you you touched right. on something that i've read in in um japanese culture um an an artist and and People who are artistic and have that time with themselves, who take the time to book that log cabin and write their book or write their their diary or or, or spend time a lot of time with themselves, it reminded me of uh, of that time where th- this artist he became he stripped himself naked, he went into a corner of his house and he just said, "Am I real? Do I exist?" And he had to really take time to find out: Am I just here? Am I just being? Am, am I affecting my reality or is, is reality affecting me? And so that was that deep, that was stage 10 mm. and 11, where he really had to do that self discovery. Am, am I here? And then he came to the final conclusion after just spending that time with himself. He's like, I think therefore I am. And so that's what you teach. That's what you speak to. Right. And, and that's where, where you said that we have, we can't stay there. You can't do this and drive a car. You can't do this and, and, and do anything else. You really need to take the time to focus. And so, uh, should people, how should people use this roadmap? Is it, is it, uh, kind of in order or can I, can I, can I go back and forth? Like, or, or can I, I use really, this roadmap to be a, a better so, manager um, or a better leader? Knowing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so number one is, is to, to, to look at the definitions of the stages. Every stage has tasks that need to be completed. It's like life is a video game, right? And you have to do the work in each stage you have to do the tasks. Um, Usually, you know, certain specific questions, time to think about. Um, certain certain tasks you need to undertake before you've completed it for now and get to move on to the next one. Um, if you fail to complete a stage, you'll get pulled back. So, for example, um, so so normally I tell people and and uh, start at stage one and do the work. Now it'll go quickly because most adults are either in stage five or six or seven when when i mean sometimes four but five six seven typically but they may have holes things that they didn't quite complete from the first few stages which is why 
why you keep getting pulled back there. So that's why I say go to stage one, start from step one and do the work and catch up to where you are now. Uh, those first few stages will go pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, like a month, month doesn't take long at all. Fill the holes. And then it gets a little tougher <laughs> as it goes on, but every stage has work, has tasks, do the work. Uh, so I, I go in order. The only exception that I would make to that is if you are currently in stage five or seven, three, five, or seven ones. The, in stage three, the dominant emotion is fear. This underlying continuous fear of your needs not being met. Stage five, you're feeling angry all the time. Stage seven, you know, this question is uncertainty. Um, and, and these are hard. Uh, and so if you're in, currently um, stuck in stage three, five, or seven, I would go where you are now and get unstuck. Get, do it as fast as you can. Get out of that stage so that you can be more effective uh, to do the work through the rest of the stages, right? If you're in fear every day, it, it's hard, you know, it's hard to think about the nature of your soul when you don't know if you can make rent tomorrow. You, so, so that's why you need to solve that, right? So, so if you're in three, five, or seven, do that work right first. Go straight there and do that work. Uh, and then go back and start filling in the holes. Um, but so, so those are the only situations where I would say go back. Uh, if you think you're probably like a four, you know, too, a little too focused on the need of others, not attending to your own need, go back to stage one and, and start. You'll, you'll pick it up along the way. Um, but if you're in a real bad place right now, uh, jump straight to the stage you're in and do the work so, so you can get to. I can't, I cannot take people suffering. I just can't take it. So, so get out of that as fast as you can, but, but then go back to stage one and, and fill in the holes and work your way forward. And if you do that, it's a much more efficient journey. Most of us bobble around on the journey, you know, grab a book here, um, you know, uh, 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 an article there, a, a good podcast. Your podcast is such a fantastic resource for this, but you want to do them in the right order. If you, if you do them in the right order, it's just faster. It's more efficient, it's more effective, and it's more enjoyable. So that's what I would do. Powerful. You mentioned this earlier, and, and, and you touched on it about if I'm focused on paying my bills, my mortgage is due next week, then I am, I am out of alignment. I am out of sync because I can't focus. I can't, I can't be my best self right now. I can't be here. I can't be present. I can't exist in this current state or this current moment of my life because my mind has, is, is focused on elsewhere. So you touch on the topic of money. I, I'm sure you get that in your mentorship, in your coaching. Yeah. How does money tie into all of this? Yeah, money is Fascinating, isn't it? There, there, money is an extension of ourselves. It is money is not inherently good, bad, evil, wonderful. It, by itself, it's not anything. It's just some paper, it's some digital bits. It's an extension, right? Show me how you spend your money, and I'll tell you what stage you're in. It's part Part of our journey, right? So most people often get as the personal journey. Um, and, but it's more than that. So getting yourself to a good financial place is going to help keep you out of that stage three, I am my needs, right? You want to get to a good financial place where, uh, you know, get yourself out of debt. Um, because then it takes away that fear of the needs not being met. Right. And when you get past that fear of how am I going to make that mortgage payment? How am I going to buy groceries this week? Uh, how am I, you know, my, my kids need this and that. And how am I going to do that? Um, it allows your mind to move forward. But beyond that, so there's this journey, there's this financial journey that people take, right? Because first you get out of debt and that's awesome. And that is so worth it. I, don't know, I mean, I, I've been there and I worked my way out and I cannot even tell you what it does for you. It allows you to free yourself to, to be yourself. That makes so much sense. It rhymes. <laughs> so think of, <laughs> think of that as a part, an integral part of your journey. 
Yeah. Love and that. and so, but that's step one. Because now you have no debt. Now you have money that you can put towards, well, what? Well, gosh, if you, you don't have a car payment to make, what can you do with that money? Well, maybe you can put it towards your dreams, your purpose, the, the reason that you're here towards helping others in a way that you want to. Imagine what you could do with that. So then the money becomes this extension of your purpose, an extension of your being, your existence here, a method for you to help others. And it becomes this very beautiful thing but not while we're sending every paycheck to the bank as opposed mm. to the bank of ourselves and the bank of our purpose and the bank of our soul. So, so your financial journey is, is very integrated with your personal journey. And that's, that's why I wrote a book about money. It's not about how to get rich quick. It's, it's got the basics of how to get out of debt. I always quote Dave Ramsey. He's awesome. I just, I love his methodology are so effective and yet so simple. Um, and his, met his methodologies are what I personally used. Um, and, uh, but, but the book's more about the nature and the effect of it on you. What is the effect on you? Yeah. 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 So yeah, Dave Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Dave. <laughs> we love you, Dave. Personal shout out from us to here. Hope he sees this. <laughs> but that is, that, that is crucial. Yeah, right? And that's paramount. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's crucial and paramount because it, it speaks to what you're talking about. Um, which one do you think someone should focus on first? If I have financial problems, but I also need to, in, I, that I need to invest in paying off the debt, paying off the mortgage, paying off the cars, paying off the credit card. Um, but I also need to focus on investing in myself. Which one should I invest in first? Which one pays the best quote unquote dividends? Ooh, good call. So these can these get to to uh, to the tough the tough question. This is a good one because um, I'll give you an example. Um, I had a friend whose uh, husband passed away too too young. Left her with debt, um, and uh, so it wasn't a good situation. There was debt, and yet she had no education. So she's sitting there going, oh, oh God, All right, real dark night of the soul. What am I going to do? I, I'm in the debt. I got to get rid of this, but I'm in education if I'm going to have a job and a life. What do I do? And the answer for her was, you better go get that education. You better put this debt on hold for a little while and go get that education so that you can have an income and then you can pay down that debt. So sometimes you have to make those choices. Now, let's suppose it's a different choice. Do I pay down the debt or do I go pay for some expensive week long seminar that I'm sure is going to be exactly what I need, right? <laughs> pay down the debt. <laughs> Whatever, whatever's in that seminar, you can learn it online for free. Go pay down the debt and get rid of that because that's going in that case is going to be the bigger dividend, right? Um, and I don't want to hear, and I'm, I'm going to coach for a minute. I, well, I need this. I just need that. Okay, Mr. Stage 3. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you have everything you need right now, except maybe more sleep. You don't need the fancy car right this minute. As Dave Ramsey says, you don't need to see the inside of a restaurant unless you're working there. Um, you, you know, all these things we tell ourselves we need, we lie to ourselves so well, you know, we fool ourselves like crazy and, uh, and, oh, I just need this vacation to get my head in the right place. No, you need to sit in the silence for an hour and face your truth to get your head in the right place. And, uh, I'm a little tough on people when I mentor them. <laughs> <laughs> it's that tough love. It's tough love. <laughs> Yes, I'm so, love. It's like my job is to show people their truth, and sometimes the truth is hard to see. So Dr. Katherine Colleen, y'all. 
on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage today. Doctor, how can we connect with you? How can we learn more from you? How can we join you on this journey and, and grow with you? Oh, that would be amazing. Um, my website is where I live online. Um, so, so go to the website, katherinecolleen.com, uh, that slash studio. And that, that is my, uh, my online ashram. It's all there. So, so all the writings are there. You go to the reading room, you can read, go to the listening room for, I do a super simple audio podcast. It's just me talking. It's just me <laughs> spouting off about all kinds of things. Um, uh, there, there, I have music there for you. I have a meditation garden with guided meditations. I have yoga for the stages. I, I want it to be all the resources you could need in one, in one place. Um, so you can go there. There's an email newsletter you can sign up for. Uh, and if you sign up for the email, it's once every Friday. And it's just kind of a digest because I put out so much stuff. It's kind of all in one place every Friday. So the email newsletter is a great way. And then you can just write back to it. If you have questions and you want to go, hey, I, I don't know what to do about this situation. My, my email newsletter, you can just write me back. And it's really me. And I am going to really write you back <laughs> and give you ideas. Uh, and that's, uh, and that's how I help. And then um, hopefully in the next few months, we'll have some online courses that are going to be donation based because I do not want money to stop you from your journey. Um, and uh, but, but yeah, so get on the email newsletter at the site. All the resources are there. Tell me what's going on in your world. Tell me how I can help. And that's what I'm here for. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you, doctor, for joining us today on Gentleman Style Podcast stage. Um, you are phenomenal. And I thank you for what you do. You are amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank so you. I think. Oh, you're inflating my ego today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You, I, I, I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever give up. We need you. We need what you're doing. So thank you for that. This is thank powerful. You. I'll be there. I'll be there. This is like my purpose for me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I want to thank you all, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. I'm keeping her website. That's katherinecolleen.com slash studio. Connect with her, grow with her, and let's get our minds, our bodies back in alignment. I hope this message has served you. I hope this was inspirational. I hope this was helpful to you. It definitely helped me. It helped me get on a better path to realizing that I have some work to do, but it's okay because that's a part of the development stage. So I hope this message has served you. I hope this has been impactful. We have to let the good doctor go because she has a world to impact and a world to save. So I hope this has inspired you. Like I end every show take care of your families take care of your friends and take care of business this is marcus norman your favorite gentleman gentleman style podcast show and dr katherine colleen the 11 development stages of human development signing off love you guys bye